Uh, biggest challenge was finding a firm that could do the facility assessments and could do them at a reasonable cost. Um, since we were looking at doing 71, um, we looked at another company that would have been more than double in costs and probably would not have given us more of the detailed report that we wanted. I have the four churches right now, and three of them were built in the 1800s, 1834, 1860, 1836. Um, so our buildings are old um, and they've been around for a long time. We're in Ohio and Ohio weather is, is crazy, freeze thaw cycles and all that. And what we really wanted to do was see how much deferred maintenance is out there that our parishes really need to do. So the question was, what's that price tag? How much money do we really need? So that was the reason for starting it. I guess in another sense, it was also to give parishes a realistic look at what they're facing. Um, if your congregation is declining and you're faced with 500,000 or a million dollars worth of improvements uh, to this facility, it might make sense to sell it move to a different facility, rent someplace, because your congregation is so small, it can't afford to do all this. So it was also in that kind of context that we were looking at it as well to have those fierce conversations where, you know, guys, the building isn't everything. A lot of churches love the building. Oh, it's all about the building. We're gonna stay here forever. Well, maybe it's time to give up the building and start something new. Parishes have gotten them. I think some of them have freaked out a little bit over everything and maybe the price tag, but the trustees of the diocese are beginning to um, look at this whole question of how can we fund or assist these parishes in their, um, their renovations. And it also causes uh, everybody to go back to the question, is it worth sinking the money into this parish or into this facility? You got four or five people here and they've got a $200,000 bill. Is it worth doing that? What a lot of parishes have done is they've been able to look at the report, have been able to begin assessing and doing those little things that they could do. So, you know, in a lot of the reports, it's like, you guys need to cut your shrubbery. <laughs> it doesn't take much money to go and do that type of stuff. And I think, and I know talking to a couple of the various ministers that they've begun to do that part of it. And so I think that's a plus. And so I think these are great to get the churches to look at themselves again. As you know, people walk in that door for 20 or 30 years and they don't see things anymore. And when uh, Nathan and Pat come in, it's a fresh set of eyes. They look, say, hey, you know, you need to paint this wall. You need to do this. Your carpeting is kind of very old. You guys need to replace that. Um, looking at parking lots, geez, how many people really take care of their parking lots like they should? Many just let them go. So those are all things that, you know, I think the parishes are seeing. I would say do it. It's it's worth spending the money to do it. You know, we're doing 71 churches. It's not cheap for us to do 71 churches and pay for 71 churches. But we offered it to all of our uh, parishes in the diocese so that we could get this data and they could get the data. If you're looking at it as, as a parish um, and you're on the fence, it's well worth doing. It's well worth, worth spending the money, spending the time, doing it, examining it, and then implementing it. Uh, it will open up their eyes to a lot of things that, like I just said, they don't see after being there for 20 or 30, 40 years. And they'll take a fresh new look at their facility. And I think it's really worthwhile doing. I think with a lot of the stuff that Nathan and Pat point out, that's really low hanging fruit. You could do a lot here and accomplish a lot and change a look uh, with very low hanging fruit. If you got structural issues, that's a different thing. Um, you know, if you got a tuck point of building, that's a different thing. Yep. But the other thing that a lot of people need to know is that even though Nathan and Pat identify something and says this might be an immediate need, like let's say tuck point, that's my prime example. You don't have to tuck point everything in, all at one time. It's costly. You can take a wall a year 
for a summer and do it. I did my own church. It built 1865, 66. Uh, that's the Civil War, just after the Civil War ended. And we did a wall a year. I did it over seven years. You know, so it's something that, that, that they can do and they can plan for, they can fundraise for if, if it's a really high dollar amount. But it's something that can be done over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's all that low hanging fruit that you can address. Even with, with that example I just gave you, so I did that tuck pointing over seven years. I made other improvements, refinished floors and stuff like that. Once people saw that, they got enthused. Mm -hmm. They got enthused and, and um, really appreciate their church once again. And you know what? People donate to it. They see it. They see that you're taking care of something that they really love and um, they're willing to contribute to it. So we've done 31 churches out of 71 right now. We're in right around the $13 million total mark, about seven to 8 million immediate needs. So what the, the trustees are doing is assessing the immediate needs when we get them all done. Um, I'm sure that number will be about 16 million. Then it's going to be, I think, one, figuring out, can we afford to help them assist them in some way? I think two, the other part is identifying those congregations that have the very large bills and say, is it worth staying here and doing this? Or is it worth moving? Or is it the time to close down? That's the tough conversation.